You just got through watching Raw, and now it's time for Hardcore Wrestling Radio's Raw Reaction. Hello, everyone. I am your hardcore host, Brickhead. As always, I got the hardcore crew with me. First, he's a wrestle gamer over at WGS TV. He's the wrestle gamer, Billy Boudreaux. Billy, what's up? Help. Help. They're holding me hostage here until I do a review with them. Help. <laughs> well, it's all right, Billy. You get to pay me back when I do your review over at WGS TV later on tonight. And as always, he's the incomparable Lance Moss over at Lance Moss TV at YouTube.com. Lance, what's shaking? Better than last Monday, but not by much. You know, I got to agree with you. Last week, um, I was really uh, disheartened with uh, last week's Raw. It was just absolutely terrible. I had nothing good to say about it. But this week's Raw, I have to say, there was some decent good matches. Um, I think the theme was really set. They had everything set in place. A lot more um, matches than last week. Oh, last week, it was all fights for the most part. Uh, but let's get on start on with this week. Um, Raw pretty much opened up with Sheamus coming out and gloating his victory over Roman Reigns at last week's uh, Survivor Series. Um, Reigns comes out, of course, hits him with a Superman punch, takes his title, kind of walks out with it, and, you know, that was only for a short time until Triple H asks for the title back and points out that Roman Reigns has to face Sheamus tonight in under 5 minutes and 15, uh, 15 seconds, and if he loses, no, he will not get his uh, TLC match, title match, over at the, this coming pay-per-view in two weeks. Can we bring up the fact that we saw four grown-ass men gyrating in the ring, which was like a horrifying thing to see? <laughs> oh, well, I think you just did. Britain a burning. <laughs> you know, that was uh, one of the few disturbing uh, pieces of the night. Um, throughout the match, though, Triple H continued to stack the deck. He said that Ambrose and the Usos would also not get their title match if Reigns did not beat... Uh, Sheamus tonight in under five minutes and 15 seconds. Now, now can I, can I answer this question? Because I know a lot of people who are listening to us are wondering, what, what's the significance of the time limit of five minutes and 15 seconds? The That was pretty much how long Reigns had the title for. Five minutes and 15 seconds. Yep. That was the significance. Um, moving on, uh, like, you know, I'm just going to talk about some of the highlights. Um, uh, we saw um, Charlotte and Becky, uh, Becky Lynch going in a non-title match. And, you know, these are obviously two friends. Uh, Becky just wanted to try, you know, just have a good match for, you know, with each other. They wanted to have a good match. It's like, I cannot talk tonight. Don't mind me. I'm, I'm a little high tonight. So, <laughs> moving on. Um, Charlotte actually got the win with the help of Rick, uh, her father, Rick Flair. It was kind of a cheesy win, a cheap win. So, uh, you know. Becky went to go talk to Charlotte after the match, and Charlotte at point says, "Hey, this isn't NXT anymore. This is the big leagues. You got to you do everything you have to win." Um, Billy, let me ask you: um, the Charlotte Becky Lynch match. What did you think of that? What do you thought? You know, what did? You... Well, with, with the ending per se, it, it's kind of like shades of her father, uh, Ric Flair, and and Shawn Michaels. We've seen Shawn Michaels even pull that. Uh, if you guys remember in the matchup that he had with Batista after a. Uh, the match uh, where, he, where he supposedly retired, Ric Flair, and I put that up in quotation marks, because when, whenever you move to another company, you're not exactly retiring, you're just moving to another company and wrestling another match, so basically, you're a liar. Uh, and Shawn, Michaels, Shawn Michaels pulled the exact same thing. He feigned an injury, which got, uh, got Batista to lower his guard, and Michaels was, took advantage, and that's exactly... What we saw out of Charlotte, Charlotte possibly adopting a little bit of the the Nature Boy's antics into her move set, apparently, because you know, because Ric Flair is probably the only uh, guy I've ever seen uh, pull off heel tactics while being faced the exact same time, and the crowd just love him for it. Well, you know, you talk uh, about it, you talk about tweeners, and we see a lot of that lately. But I think Ric Flair has been able to do it a little bit better. Uh, Lance, let me ask you this: with the Becky Lynch Charlotte match. Do we possibly see Charlotte turning heel? Is this a slow turn, or you think it was just a one-time thing? Yes, we do, and I gotta kind of say that there's been one other guy that's been able to get over as all hell doing uh, heel tactics and got over doing it. 
Anybody remember Latino Heat Eddie Guerrero? Absolutely, the late uh, Eddie Guerrero. And yeah, you know what? He was one of those guys who did the heels, and uh, but the fans just loved him. So eventually, he had to make that slow turn to the babyface. Yeah. I, uh, I, I can go. We can go back further. We can go back further. I, I, I don't think I don't know if we could place him into the same category, but I would. Uh, Stone Cold Steve Austin. Absolutely, yeah. uh, you know, and I—he's uh, just a, another one where you know, the you know they have to turn him to go with the fans. Um, let's move along. There was a second uh, t- uh, a second Divas match, and I hate to say it, but both Diva matches were the matches of the night. Um, yeah. Sasha Banks uh, faced Brie Brie Bella. Um, her sister Nikki is quote unquote on uh, <laughs> injury, but if you ask me, I still think that she's hanging out with John Cena, who's taking a hiatus. Oh, that's awesome. I mean, bed sores happen when you're on your back 24-7. <laughs> um, Brie would get the loss after tapping out to the bank statement. Um, again, another great Divas match. Billy, let me ask you, are the Divas finally starting to outshine the male roster? They're heading in the right direction, but as it stands right now, no. Uh, they, 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 ha- they, ha- they still have a long way to go to be just as interesting, if not more interesting, than their, their male counterparts on, on the main roster. They, they still have a long way to go. Okay. Um, well, at least they're heading, in, as you said, they're heading in the right direction. Um, Lance, uh, we, we saw uh, Sheamus, it, this was, of course, during the title match, um, Reigns did get the win, but it was by disqualification, so therefore he did win, but not the title. Um, and Sheamus came out and created this League of Nations in the form of himself, Del, uh, Alberta Del Rio, um, King Barrett, and Rusev. Um, what do you think about this whole new uh, stable that they created? Is it a, you think it's going to go far, or do you think it's just uh, something until Reigns gets the win? Honestly, the farthest I say this this faction going is maybe WrestleMania then a breakup. But yeah. I would say to the next big one to the next big four pay per view, but that's only about a month and a half away, so it's a little short lived. I'll give it to Mania. All right. But, and one problem I had with the actual layout of this uh, show, they gave away basically two main event segments in one show. They should have went did the whole 515 for the main event of this Raw and the actual main event of this Raw next week. Alright. Um, another thing that we did notice um, Rusev was facing Ryback and Ryback kind of came out in, in a bit of a heelish attitude um, during the match. Um, we saw uh, Ru- uh, Rain. Uh, Ryback, hello again. Sorry, I need to stop smoking weed. Um, throws out um, Rusev and he throws him into the stairs where Lana pretty much, you know, feigns an injury, pretends that she's hurt, and uh, Ryback, or as I call him, Rybor, gets back in the ring and wins the match via countout. Billy, my question to you is this: uh, Are we seeing a slow turn? on Ryback, because this is the second time Ryback has done heelish moves. Um, during the pay-per-view, he shoved the referee, causing a disqualification. I've said it before on WJS TV, and I'm going to say it on here. Ryback is much better as a face than as a heel. Ryback is over, for some reason, with the crowds on, on Monday Night Raw. The Feed Me More chants are really over with the WWE crowd. The merchandise is over with Ryback. Do not, I repeat, do not turn Ryback heel because the last time that happened, it was a miserable fail. Well, you know, you talked about that, and I'm going to say Ryback, if you ask me, and even the rest of the hardcore crew, Ryback just has not been that impressive. He doesn't have it. It You know, he has no charisma. Um, Well, let's give this question then. Uh, a, 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 as a matter of personal preference, face Ryback or heel Ryback? You know, to be honest with you, I think either one is not going to help him with his career. Um, but I think they need to do it, change his gimmick, you know, give him a major overhaul because right now he is boring. Hell, I saw a few signs in there that said, feed me corn. So I, I don't think he's that over with the fans. Uh, but I still think it's possible that they can change the direction of the character without 
necessarily having to turn them heel. They can have them adopt a new type of attitude while at the same time maintain the face uh, his face position on the on the show. All right. Well, let's get over to the uh, the main event. Um, the main event match was going to be uh, Reigns, the Usos, and his good friend Dean Ambrose against uh, the newly formed League of Nations. However, of course, the Authority had to stack the deck yet even more as they brought out New Day, and now it's going to be pretty much the New Day and League of Nations in a 7-on-4 handicap match. Um, you know, for what it was, it was a decent match, but it was an uphill battle for the baby faces. Um, Sheamus does get the win as he broke kicks Ambrose after pretty much all chaos had broken loose, and he gets the three count for the win. Um, Lance, what was your thoughts about this match? Well, Grant, everybody knows my feelings on WWE tag matches. And, well... It had its bright spots where some pretty good spots like where they let basically Dean Ambrose go ballistic, which, so, is okay, is the best way I can put it. Okay. Um, Billy, obviously, they, uh, you know, as I said before, they are stacking this deck against Roman Reigns. Um, do you think they're going to stack the deck again at TLC, maybe making him wait a little bit longer before they put the title around his waist? I would see them possibly in the angle that they they would build for the TLC match to do much of the same that what we saw tonight. Um, as far as what they do at the actual pay-per-view, I, I don't think it would make any sense to do that whatsoever, considering the, the type of match it's going to be. And there would, there would be no reason for it. Now, if they would have New Day run in as a interference and a, allowed Sheamus to go up there and, and climb the title, then they can make a case to continue the feud between them, considering uh, everything that went on. And, you know, like I said, you know, me and uh, the CWA manager, Joseph Knight, who's not here tonight, um, we did talk about uh, the possibility of uh, making Reigns go all the way to WrestleMania, it'll be like a one-year uh, venture to winning the title. Because if you look at it so far, the Money in the Bank briefcase has pretty much been the huge thorn in the side from when it last at WrestleMania, is Seth Rollins cashed in to, get to, to take the title from him. Then at Money in the Bank pay-per-view, he was had his hands on it, only to have Bray Wyatt pretty much knock him off the ladder, and that's where Sheamus got the win. Of course, this past pay-per-view... Just as Reigns was, you know, get the win. He did win the title. He speared Triple H, and then you know who cashes in once again, but Sheamus and loses. So uh, I really don't see him winning at this uh, this uh, pay per view at TLC. He's gonna come close. He's gonna have his hands on it, but I won't be surprised if the League of Nations come on up. Um, but you know what, guys? We're going to wrap things up right here. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I, I am, Rick, I'm a little bit appalled and ashamed that you did not mention this segment, considering the name of your show is Hardcore Wrestling Radio, and you did not bring up that one of the idols of Hardcore Wrestling returned to Monday Night Raw tonight in the form of Tommy Dreamer. Look, I'm ashamed of you that you didn't mention that. Well, you know, for, uh, it was an okay match, but it just it, I, I'm not going to lie to you. Yes, of course, you know, it, he is the hardcore legend, but the match just really did, it didn't sell well with me. That's just my personal opinion. And, you know, I wanted to just do some of the highlights rather than a match by match, which you do over at uh, WGS TV. But here, sometimes Raw just doesn't deserve to have a full review. We just, you know, want to do the review and move on, unfortunately. Uh, until wrestling really gets up to that next level that it used to be, that we all loved and cared about, that first gave us that drive, I don't think it's, you know, worth the time, which sucks. Um, but, you know, as I said before, we are going to wrap this up, and we want to know your thoughts, everyone. What did you think about tonight as the, the authority stacked the deck against Roman Reigns? Um, do you think Charles going to turn heel? Put those comments in the comments section okay. below, and please okay. make sure you subscribe to us over at youtube.com slash show. As always, I'd love to thank my good friend, Double B. Boudreaux, for coming on the show. Billy, what do you got going on, and where can people find you? Well, I'll be continuing my playthroughs of Franbo, um, Keep Talking, Nobody Explodes, 
And uh, I'm looking into uh, various console games. Uh, one, uh, one in particular, Deadpool. Um, I tried. Uh, I played a little bit of a demo of it before, and uh, let's just say it's gonna be fun playing that one. You guys can check me out on youtubecom slash WrestleGamer. And last, certainly not least, he's the incomparable Lance Moss. Lance, you're over at youtubecom slash Lance Moss TV. Lance, what do you got going on? I got album reviews, NASCAR discussion videos, redneck gourmet cooking videos, musical equipment reviews, and if about a month, month and a half, I'll, I'll probably be having a guitar build ser series starting up. And uh, don't forget to check me out every Wednesday night at 7 Central, 8 Eastern. I think 5 Pacific, if I'm not mistaken. We go live on Last Monster TV in France. I don't know who will show up. Hit me up on Twitter at Last Monster TV and subscribe if you hadn't already. Absolutely, guys. Get on over there. So for everybody here, I am your hardcore saying we'll see you when we see you.